At the turn of the 20th century, the Philippines was between two regimes. This was the time of the American insular government. The Americans posed the big challenge before all of us, which is, um, are we strong enough to stand as a nation? At that time, the Filipinos were still trying to find the sense of who they really were out of the debris of colonialism. Into this milieu was born, almost at the same time, two artists who would influence in immeasurable ways the way the Filipinos looked at themselves. Even their names were similar, Carlos V. Francisco and Francisco V. Cochin were born less than five years apart, both showed artistic talent at a young age. While Carlos V. Francisco, better known as Botong, chose to create paintings and murals, Koching created comics. And both of them uh, represented the Filipino visually, in, uh, not only in the fine arts, but also in the popular Forms. Born in Angono Rizal on November 4, 1914, Botong is known for his murals depicting Philippine history and culture. Ang pinakamalaking ngayon nag-exist yung nasa City Hall of Manila, yung 100 years of Philippine struggle. Yan yung nandudun yung uh, portion ni uh, Andres Bonifacio. No, yan yung isa sa pinakamalaking ginawa ng Lolo. In Botong's works, the Filipino, even when engaged in toil, projects an image of sinewy strength and dignity. There was certainly this global awareness in Botong, and he was precisely using the, his ideas to come up with a Philippine iconography for his art. It is said that Botong drew his images from life. Botong was studying his environment and drawing out from this world images that he was then using as the basis of his artistic metaphors. He painted his friends, his neighbors, and his beloved hometown and depicted their practices and rituals. Ang makikita mo sa ginagawa niya is parang larawan ng anggo. No, no? Pati yung mga, mga model siguro niya, no? yung mga pinagkukunan niya ng ideas, hindi yung mga kaibigan niya. Anggono and Botong are synonymous with each other. So Botong embodies both. No? The native, meaning his birthplace and his hometown, Anggono. But on the other hand, he's also able to transcend that being native, to embody or represent something national. Koching, who was born in Pasay on January 29, 1919, is known for his comics. Ang comics, ang isa sa mga nagibigay ng most vivid representation ng kultura ng Pilipinas. Si Koching is one of the uh, uh, pioneers of Philippine comics. More than just ephemeral narratives, however, Koching created folk characters that captured the hearts and minds of a generation of fans. Ang comics kasi, once mabasa mo, you get involved in the story eh. Nagiging something na sinusubaybayan mo uh, every week, every, every two weeks, at nagiging part sila ng buhay ng mga tao. Well, uh, people also uh, always want to uh, have a mirror to uh, look on themselves, no? And to a large extent, Koching provided this mirror for Filipinos to look on themselves. In four decades, Koching created 58 serialized works, 55 of which were made into films. Some not only became blockbusters, but even reaped awards yung mga surviving artists today who was working sa mga comics noong araw were going on about ah, si Kuching yan, sino siya ang pinakamagaling na, na artist slightly relaxed yung mga figures niya pero may hindi na ba yung Kuching talagang sumasabog eh, with the energy eh Well, we can say that Kuching's uh, striking even dramatic characters were based on classes in Philippine society 
Many of these comics portrayed a particular type of hero that was unmistakably Filipino. Pre-colonial indigenous characters, eh? which were like uh, Tarzan figures, for example, which were strong and stalwart men, like Hagibis. Unfortunately, most of his works were not preserved. For many years, wala kang mabibiling material or information about the history of Philippine comics. If you want to learn about who's sino ba yung mga naging artist natin, wala eh. Kasi there was no serious effort to preserve or archive yung mga comics natin before. During Botong and Coaching's heyday, artists did not discriminate between painting and illustration. All forms of art became reflective of the, the need to to forge a nation, it became our burden to show that we have a culture, uh, we have a bedrock, as it were, of heritage uh, that we can display by way of our creative imagination. Botong created the comic Siete Infantes de Lara and was the costume designer and production manager of several movies, including the critically acclaimed Genghis Khan. One notes that Though they are associated with particular art forms, uh, say, botong with painting, uh, coaching with illustration, nonetheless, they were versatile artists. It was only in the 1970s when art collections became in vogue that the distinctions between the high art of painting and the low art of popular illustration were emphasized. The distinctions neto between painting and illustration is part of yung larger distinction between art and craft or between fine art and applied art. Despite being conferred many awards in his lifetime, Kuching was denied the title of national artist in the two instances that he was nominated, supposedly because he was only an illustrator. Tumanggap siya ng Komopeb bilang achievement award sa Malacanang Merit of Excellence saka yung Visual Arts sa Cultural Center of the Philippines. Hopefully, I hope, maging national artist na siya. Botong, on the other hand, was named National Artist for Visual Arts in 1973. In spite of the difference in their art forms, the works of Botong and Koching shared several fundamental similarities. One notes their tendency to idealize you know, the human figure. The form is, is heroic. It's, it's something that you would normally not find in an individual person because it's an amalgamation of the best features found in, in various people. Unlike many of their peers, both artists did not leave the country for work abroad even when they had the opportunity to do so. Bot really never had any interest about going abroad. He never left the Philippines. There's even a story that when he was about to leave the Philippines to go abroad, he, he got sick. No? So uh, he, he never left. Ever since very nationalistic and daddy, kinukuha na siya sa U.S. para doon kami itira, doon siya magtrabaho. Pero lagi yung sinasabi, never ako mag magiging under na isang amo na puti. Okay lang ko Filipino. Botong with his murals, Koching with his comics. Two artists using different media, both with a fierce love of country and dedication to their craft. Ayaw yan ang mga kumukopya ng ibang films, yung mga story na yan. Talagang puro sarili niya. Kung ano nakikita sa mga Pilipino, Kung ano mga attitude, characters. Gusto niya kasi mga great na tao, katulad si Lapu-Lapu. Nung nga retired na siya, dinawin pa niya si Gabriela Silang. Yung personal na passion, yung dedikasyon niya sa paglikha ng, ano, ng sining. Ito ay para sa ikabubuti ng mga susunod na generasyon dahil mapag-aaralan to. No? Both artists gifted the Filipino nation images of beauty and power that will forever be with us. 
So both of them uh, represented the Filipino as uh, strong, as stalwart, as uh, someone with a destiny, and a destiny that can be realized through, through human action. The noble savage, the wise giver of laws, and the stately princess Lubluban, the provincial lass at home with nature, the prostitute with a heart of gold, the mestizo who battled for the Indio, the peasant who led a revolution. To both artists, we owe a debt beyond measure. They have left us a legacy far greater than their wondrous works of art. Images that mirror the best of who we are and that enable us to view ourselves in a new light. Icons that make us proud that we are Filipinos.